welcome again to the History of Image podcast. I'm your host Sonia Dubey Diwan, India's first certified image professional and the founder of the Indian School of Image Management. We are here to learn about the fascinating origins of everything that becomes a part of our image. In this episode, I will be taking you through the elegant history of dining etiquette and how table manners have evolved throughout the centuries and culture. Let's get started. Dining etiquette and its significance. Table manners are important. Table manners serve as a way of showing respect for our host as well as for the food that has been prepared for us. They also help to create a sense of order and decorum allowing everyone to enjoy their meal without any distractions. Although these rules vary from culture to culture, they play a significant role in shaping our relationship with food and with each other. People in any social setting judge you based on not only how you eat your food but also how well you eat it. Dining etiquette or a lack of it can have a big effect on your social standing particularly when you're moving in business circles. While having good table manners is important as it says a lot about the person, the most important thing is not to make other people feel awkward. Dining etiquette is more than using the correct cutlery and napkin protocol. There are more subtle behaviors, many of which go back in centuries and stem from the aristocratic ceremonies in different cultures. Let's go back in history and revisit the primal beginnings of dining etiquette and table manners. Origins of dining etiquette and table manners. The earliest dining traditions were documented by ancient Greeks. Surviving images on countless work of art including pottery's, frescoes, wine cups and sculptures frequently depict ancient Greeks reclining on kleine, the elite reclining couches to eat and drink at a symposium. The symposium was a two-part gathering where the participants devoured a three-course meal followed by an elaborate wine drinking session guests were often served by slaves or servants men gathered and discussed philosophical and political issues or recited poetry while women sat at a low table placed in front of the luxurious couches in terms of table manners guests would typically recline on their left elbow and use their right hand to pick food from a communal tray in the center of the table it was customary to clean their hands with water or wine before and after eating modern dining elements like spoons knives and forks were non-existent during this period contrary to what's depicted in the movies and on tv shows the table manners during the middle ages were nothing like the barbaric mannerism that are depicted on screen the rise of feudalism and the importance placed on rank and social status led to the development of strict rules around dining etiquette the dining table was arranged according to social rank with the most important guest seated closest to the head of the table the etiquette began the second guest came through the door and even before that Each person was even expected to bring their cutlery to eat. People carried their spoons with them everywhere they went. Hence, the phrase giving up your spoon quite literally meant a certain death. The widespread acceptance of the fork as an eating utensil is post-medieval. Introduced in France soon after 1553 when Catherine de Medici married the future Henry II, the fork was only really accepted in england in the 17th century the renaissance was a time of great change and innovation and dining etiquette was no exception the rise of the merchant class and the growing importance of commerce and trade led to the development of more cosmopolitan and international dining culture at this point some shifts began to happen it began 
with the tablecloth. Instead of simply dressing the table, tablecloths became a communal napkin. Individuals restrained themselves from cleaning their mouths and hands on their clothing and instead would wipe their hands directly on the cloth. Still, over the time throughout the Renaissance period, the concept of the communal napkin shifted and shrunk in size. Thus, the communal napkin was no longer a full-size tablecloth, but instead a smaller cloth that a servant would carry on their left arm. The 16th to 18th centuries saw the publication of books on curtsy, aimed at the upper classes in particular. These included On Civility in Children by Dutch philosopher Erasmus of Rotterdam and Galateo by Italian poet Giovanni della Casa. At the turn of the 19th century, dishes began to vary in height and heavy candelabras would often adorn tables. Flowers began to be expected as a part of the table decoration, especially the heavy use of flowers at nice gatherings. In addition to the rise of the middle class, the 19th century saw the spread of the Industrial Revolution. Hence, there was a growing demand for affordable and convenient dining options. This led to the rise of new dining establishments such as coffee houses and restaurants. In the 20th century, there was a decline in formal sit-down dinners as people began to embrace more casual dining experiences, largely driven by the rise of fast food. Now that we are aware of how table manners evolved throughout the history, let's understand the dining practices in diverse cultures around the world. Dining Cultures Around the World Most of the history of dining etiquette developed in Europe, but as we move further, it is essential to acknowledge the variation in custom and norms across other parts of the world. In North America, meals are typically served in courses, except at formal dinner, it is common to have two courses, either an appetizer or salad, and a main dish or a main dish and a dessert. Americans have a different way of holding their utensil and cutting up food than most European countries. This style is known as the American style or switch and switch style. The method involves cutting up a few bites of food at once with your fork in your left hand and a knife in your right hand, then switching your fork to your right hand with the tines facing towards you as you eat. While in South America, in countries like Chile, the most important custom to remember is to use utensil for everything. Even finger foods such as french fries and pizza are eaten with a fork and knife. In India, people wash their hands thoroughly before dining and then eat with their fingers with the minimum use of cutlery. Indian dining is meant to be a sensory experience, so using the sense of touch is largely encouraged to enhance the meal. For this reason, naan is often used to scoop food and even meals like dal are eaten with the hands by scooping it using Indian bread. In India, it is considered taboo to eat with your left hand as it is considered unclean. The right hand is reserved for picking up the food to eat while the left hand is reserved for personal hygiene. This custom is also followed in the Middle East. Traditionally, sitting down together on floor mats in comfortable clothes is the norm. Ayurvedic beliefs and customs influence Indian meal structures and practices. Hence, it is advised to breakfast moderately, lunch well and eat light dinner. In China, demonstrating good table manners is thought to bring good health and fortune. People share dishes communally. To permit, easy sharing square and rectangular tables are normally used for small groups of people, while round tables are for large groups. If the round table is very large, then it is usually has a lazy Susan turntable for passing or serving dishes. There are several key customs to remember to observe when dining in China. First, it is important to understand how to use chopsticks. 
leaving them upright in a bowl between bites is considered poor taste. This is how ceremonial rice is typically left as an offering at funerals. Contrary to what other customs believe, belches are welcome and seen as an indication of satisfaction and a compliment to the chef. In Japan, many occasions call for traditional customs and proper etiquette. At restaurants and bar, oshibori, a steamed hot towel, is offered to clean your hands. However, you should avoid using it to wipe your face and elsewhere. As with Chinese tradition, you should also avoid sticking chopsticks straight into the bowl in Japan. It is acceptable to slurp noodles loudly. This is thought to improve the flavor and allow diners to eat hot food more quickly. It is also seen as a sign of appreciation towards the chef. Similarly, it's common to drink directly from the soup bowl as spoons are seldom used when dining in Japan. There are many more diverse dining practices and manners followed around the world which re-emphasizes the fact that food is indeed an important social, personal and political affair. This brings us to the end of another episode. We had a great time learning about the emergence of dining etiquette through human history along with the brief about some dining cultures around the world. Thank you everyone for listening. Stay tuned as we will be back with a brand new episode soon. You can stay updated by following us on social media with the link in the episode description. This is your host, Sonia Dubey-Divan, and I will see you next time.